Hey, Don Copeland here, and today we're going to show you a little bit about the RIP software that comes with the Compress uh, IUV 600S and 1200S. Uh, this, we call it Compress RIP Q10, and what it basically is is a Q-based RIP that allows you to uh, control the way the data is sent to your printer. So we're going to go through the different default cues that come with the software, give you a real brief idea of what they're about, and understand that at any point you can also customize these as well to your specific needs. So we're going to start off here really quickly. The RIP software, which stands for Raster Image Processor, basically think of it as a print driver on testosterone that is driving your printer in specific ways. Because we have some things that go on with our UV printers that you don't have on, on a typical desktop printer. <clears throat> we have the ability to print color as we're used to. We also have the ability to print white. We have the ability to print clear. We have the ability to change the order of our layers, whether we want white to go down first or color to go down first or white, then color, and then clear. So there's so many options. We need to have something that controls it. And that's what the RIP does to, for, the, for a good part of what it's about. So we're going to start off showing you across here. We have the, this is the printer we are identifying here. We're just going to be showing you stuff on the 600. These are the exact same cues that we would have on the 1200, just the bed's a little bit larger. We have our single layer, which is probably the most commonly used. And what it means is that when we bring a design in, we're literally just going to print one layer. It's going to be either all color or color with a white highlight added into it. So if there was something white in the design, you could actually have it print the white at the exact same time. This would be something you would print on a, on a white substrate or a lighter colored substrate, maybe even on a clear substrate that wouldn't need a white underbase. Very simply, you import a file into it. It's just a little Coldesi logo that we have. And you can bring this image in. This is a, an Illustrator file that I've brought in. You have the ability down here to control the size, the spacing, the location of the design right here. If I wanted this to be six inches wide, I could. And if I wanted it to be placed, let's say, at two inches and two inches, oh, two inches, it'll position it right there. This point right here represents two inches and two inches. This represents the front corner of our bed. So that would be our single layer printing. It's going to now just, when I process this, it'll send this all over to the RIP. One layer pass and good to go. The next, probably the second most common that we have would be the auto white queue. What this means is, is that a white layer is going to be generated automatically when you bring your, your file in. In the case, again, of this same job here, if we bring this job in, it's going to actually <clears throat> going to give us the ability, and it will generate a white underneath of this item here. We'll make this one again six inches, and we're going to move it to two inches and two inches as well. There we go. And if I process this now, what this is actually going to do is it's going to generate a white underbase under this section here of the Coldesi logo and under the lettering for Cold SE Achieving Dreams Together. That gives us automatically generated white specific to this piece of artwork. Because this was an Illustrator file or anything that has a transparency back here, this area that you see in between here and the inside of the letters and whatnot is not going to have white ink underneath of it. To show you a little bit of what it's going to do here, if we look at what is called the raw data, this actually is going to show us the data that's going to be sent over to the printer. Right here we have the, the color information. If I turn off the color layer, you'll see this is the white layer that's going to be generated and sent over to it as well. So this is a good, nice another feature of the software that allows you to check what's going over to the printer. all, But it also shows you what's going on here. All right. Now we can take this same job and instead of telling it to use auto white color, we can also tell it to do find color auto white, all right? In this case, if we process it, what it's going to do, this would be a job that it'll say we are going to uh, back print this. We're going to print this on the back. I typically would have mirrored this image, or which I didn't do. We won't worry about that right now. If I look at the raw data now, we see I have here, if I turn my second layer off as the white, you see this is the color, and then we back printed it with the white. If I turn the, the white layer on, you'll see this is the white only that was printed. If you notice when I turn the color on, 
it actually you can see just a little bit of the peak around the edges. That's because we've choked back that white just a hair so that it, it, it doesn't com come completely to the edges and we don't have to worry about a registration issue or the fact that the inks are stacked on top of each other and seeing the white. So that's the same cue, just different orders that we print the, the ink layers. We have our manual white cue. The difference between the auto white cue and the manual white cue is the manual white cue looks to the artwork specifically for a defined white layer to be printed. Whereas in the auto white layer queue, we actually took the data from the file and generated our own white based on all of the data there. If let's say for the, the job I just showed, when I bring in this job again, and if I was printing this onto a light, you know, for instance, if we were printing this design onto a, a cup, like a stainless steel cup, we probably wouldn't need to worry about printing white under the, the cold SE Achieving Dreams together, right? So what we would do is we would generate a white highlight, I mean, a white underbase just for the cold SE logo, all right? That would be embedded into the file. You could either do that in Illustrator, you could do that in Photoshop, and you could also do it in the designer software, which allows you to create specific areas of white, and you embed those into the file. When they come in, the software recognizes them, treats those as the white layer, and once again, can either print them in the order of white and then color, or color then white in an application like a clear acrylic or something where you're doing a back print and coming through with that. We also have manual and auto clear layers. Uh, what th these cues allow you to do, similar to the, the auto white and the manual white, what these do is they're going to, the auto, is going to take the data that we hand to it and generate the layer itself. So in the auto clear mode, what it would do is literally with this job, again, as we bring this in, it would take this job and it's going to create a clear coat that is exactly matched up to the data that we send over to here, the logo and whatnot. Similar to how we we presented, it generated a white layer that went underneath of all the lettering and the, the actual logo. It would be the same thing here again, except it would typically not be choked, right? As you can see, this design actually even looks a little pale. That's because it's showing the clear coat that's going to go over top of just the lettering and just the logo. You can actually set this up so it actually spreads a little bit over it, so you get a little bit of a bleed of the clear all the way over the edges of it. Once again, you can also control the order of these, though it's not real common that you would put a clear under a color, but it's, there, there may be an application you would find for that. When we go to the manual clear, once again, this would be for doing selective clear coding on the top. Typically, this would be, let's get, you've got something that you just want to like maybe a website name or uh, lettering or something specific, something that you want to look wet that you wanted to have just one certain area that gets that, that highlight of clear. And so what it would do would print your color layer and then come back and it would print the actual uh, clear just in the area where you've designated it to go. The next would be our texture queue. What the texture queue is going to do is it's going to allow you to do a buildup so that you have certain areas that are higher than others on the design. You, you've you probably seen this done for artwork where it looks like brush strokes. Uh, again, if you're doing uh, certain items where you want a name or a logo to pop out, you could actually do a build up here. What it simply does is it takes your colored data and it also takes your underbase data. In this case, it's called a texture, right? And you'll be able to see that actually when we set up a texture, we can sit in here, come into our texture, and we can tell it right here how many repeats we want. The more repeats we do of a texture layer, the taller that the texture becomes. So you set that up very much so like a manual clear or a manual white. It is something you're going to generate. Most frequently, it's generated in the compressed designer software where you generate a white layer a texture layer that is then attached to the graphic file when it comes over it's recognized as the texture layer it's pulled out and then based on the criteria that you lay here 
It's going to repeat it one time up to multiples. We've done up to 20 layers. Typically, you're going to do your the, when you're trying to do a texture, anywhere from five to seven layers is the most common. You can build your texture layer up out of white only, white and clear, clear only, or all the colors combined, depending on how fast of a buildup and what type of buildup you want. But that is what the texture mode is used for. You can also use a texture that's only built out of the clear ink. If you wanted to, let's say you had a design you were printing out on some material and you wanted to come back and you wanted to look like a raindrop or a teardrop or a just a condensation drop on the front of a you know the classic coca-cola bottle or a corona bottle and then what you would do is you would actually take that area and build that up as a texture after you printed the color and only build it up with the clear ink the last of our cues is our white only cue what our white only cue is going to do is if we import our file all right we're just going to bring this file in once again, our, and what this is going to do is it's actually going to take the graphic and based on whether I select tonal or solid, what it's going to do is it's going to take this design and I have, obviously you see I have it as a black background here. It's going to take in the areas that are colored and when it, I choose solid, it's going to print those as solid white. If they're not a color, then there's nothing going to print. If I use tonal, it's actually going to create a equivalency of a gray scale of this object, except it's going to it may be a white scale. The darker the image is, so like a dark blue might get 80% white, whereas a yellow might get 15% white. And it'll give you a tonal representation, but it's white ink only. So that's the whole rundown of the different default cues that come with the compress rip. Q10 software that comes along with your IUV 600S or 1200S, but you can imagine there are tons of different combinations that you yourself could build up, create your own cues. We oftentimes, when we are um, experimenting with items here, we'll create, we have a, a cue that we call Bill's Test, Bill's our lead technician here, and we'll just actually go in and create our own working cues inside of there when we're experimenting with different modes where, you know, you might need a three-layer print. You might need a print that literally you print a white and then you print a color if you want to do a a, a highlight uh, level of texture for the clear like we described for a water drop so these are the defaults you can create as many defaults as you want to and save them so that you don't have to worry once you if you have a certain job you do a certain way you could name the queue you know joe's garage you know whatever your business cards or whatever it is you're going to join for them thumb drives things like that you guys should name the queue whatever you want by building it from all these tools that we have that are based out of these default queues that would be a quick overview of the different queues that we have in the compress iuv software the q10 thanks for watching